All right, carburetor removal on a SV650. I quick looked at YouTube and I couldn't find a video on how to do this, so I'm gonna see if I can give it a shot. All right, disconnect negative battery terminal as described in chapter three. Um, I actually pulled the whole battery out because I'm gonna be replacing the battery anyway. This is your negative terminal. You just don't want any chance of causing a spark when you potentially got loose fuel around there. So disconnect the vacuum hose from the fuel valve. I'm actually not going to do that. This is the fuel valve here. This is the line they're talking about. I'm not gonna take it off of this side because I'm not removing the fuel pump here. Technically, I don't even have to take it off here because I'm not taking the intake boot off, but I'm taking the valve cover off in a bit, so I am going to just push that down there, grab my green tape. Anything with green tape means I need to reconnect it before I start this bike or else I'll forget to do it. Disconnect the air box as described in this chapter. I had already done this, but you got two breathers here that are gonna come off. If you've got a California model, go trade it in for one that isn't a California model, but if you still got one, you're gonna have a pair valve here and then uh, I still think mine is incorrect or it modified in some way. I feel like this should have gone down and routed out to ground as a, a drop. Well, then no, not actually because you should have to release it. Anyway, those are the clips you have to take off. All right, so now we've got our air box out and <laughs> where are you going, buddy? All right, so disconnect the fuel hose from the fuel pump. That is going to be here. So brought this clip up. Um, I got these Harbor Freight. Uh, hose pullers so I've already worked this one but it's gonna come up there that's gonna come out with the assembly so no green need for green tape on that one disconnect the throttle position sensor connector that is right here I'm not gonna be pulling it off yet because I'll pull it off when it's on the bench because then I won't lose one of these screws just dropping down there I don't need to pull it off yet cut the cable tie that secures the starter cable to the carburetor bracket. That one threw me through a loop. Because when I think of a starter, I think of this. And that's not the starter. They're calling the choke the starter. So there's supposed to be a zip tie here following the choke cable that has been done by somebody else before me. So there just is none. So that step is done. If it's here though, you'd want to cut it off because these choke cables aren't coming with the assembly out. They're gonna stay. Unscrew the starter fitting retaining screw and separate the starter fitting assembly from the rear carburetor. That one is here. JS screwdriver is going to work better for you. This does need to come off because it can't stay with the assembly, looks like. Oh, hello there. I wanna keep this screw. That can come down and stay, All right? Detach the idle speed control cable from the mounting bracket. Figure four. Oh, I remember that one. All right, that's over here. That is just this plastic piece. And I found just pushing this behind it. Boom, all right, so that's out. Loosen this clamp screw on the rubber intake tube for each carburetor. Figure five. That would be this one here. And that would be this one here, which I actually didn't do that one yet. So I went out and bought this one because I didn't have one that reached it. Unfortunately, not JIS because they don't have those in stores for whatever reason. Okay, so loosen you way up. Let's get back that way out. Okay, that should be loose, I think. Measure the height of the cable adjuster so they can be reinstalled into their original locations. What they're talking about there is these. Instead of measuring the height of them, what I did is I just counted the turns and I have 10 turns visible on each of them. Okay, lift the carburetor assembly up. That's gonna be harder than originally anticipated. Okay, easy killer. One out, one out. Okay, easy, easy, easy. All right, long screwdriver because it wants the other starter thing to come out and you can't get to it correctly until this thing's loosened. 
So that by starter, I mean they're talking about the choke. I'm gonna leave you there, and I want to get that magnet on it. Oh, you're grabbing the wrong thing. There you go. Grab me the screw. Grab me the screw. Yes, there's the screw. All right, carburetor is out. What is that? Best guess is that is a 12. Oh, yeah. That's a 12. All right, so I'm going to loosen both of those. Here's the height of the cable. All right, detach the throttle cables from the throttle pulley. Uh, ooh. Okay, that's one. Actually, I'm gonna label that. That is rear. All right, time for that other one. Easy enough. Labeled one, so I know which one is which. Oh, wait, nope, just do that. Okay, detach the drain hoses from the carburetors. Uh, not gonna do that because drain hose one there, drain hose two here. It's gonna come out with the assembly, so don't need to pull it off while it's there. Remove the carburetor assembly, so nothing should be holding it at this point. There's a carburetor assembly. So actually the instructions in the manual are pretty damn clear. You don't have to do all of it because you can do some of it over on a bench, but that is uh, about a hundred times easier than a V4.